Hey guys, RJ here, and I know that this review is a little bit later than normal, but if any of you saw my Big Little Lies review from earlier in the week, you would know that my girlfriend and I actually purchased a home recently, and dear lord does it need renovated. That's what we've been doing for pretty much the last nine days. I'm extremely pooped, but don't worry, I'm still here for you, so hey pumpa, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? I also wanted to throw this little news bit in here in case some of you haven't heard. The Expanse has been renewed for season three, so yeah. So guys, with that being said, as per usual, if you have not seen episode eight, season two of The Expanse, please turn off this review, go watch it, come back. There are spoilers ahead and I don't wanna ruin anything for you. With that out of the way, let's just kind of dive into this. This episode's called Pyre, and I can definitely see the pyre getting built in this episode. There's a lot of buildup for tension in this, and obviously we get some payoff, but there's a much bigger revelation that I'm sure is about to come for us, and dear Lord, does this set this up well. Let's just kind of start out at the beginning here. The scene with Prax and him coming awake and you know he sees the solar panels coming down on him the solar farm and it falls through the dome and then he wakes up injured i loved that whole scene i love the way that they shot it i love the music that was with it too where he's like looking at his daughter you know like waving goodbye and then she kind of just dissipates into the black i love that whole bit and then he ends up meeting his uh, co-worker there on uh, the pretty much the refugee ship that they're on and they're you know they kind of bond for like five to ten minutes and I actually really like these scenes with them because while it wasn't super in-depth character wise it didn't need to be they set up a really good bunch of acting scenes for them a good amount of script for them and then we find out in the middle of this episode pretty much what happens to her the belters kind of are taking revenge due to Anderson Dawes and uh, they you know they pretty much shove all these earthers and uh, enters pretty much in this airlock they end up sending them all out into space and honestly i was kind of i was tearing up for this because it was just i did not really see that happening i thought they were literally just going to get moved to another ship but clearly that did not happen and just the look on prax's face as you know he's already lost he thinks he's lost his daughter already and then now he's losing, you know, someone, pretty much one of the only other people that it seems like he might know from that station and, or at least someone that he's close to. And yeah, that, that whole scene, you know, they're pressing their hands up against the glass and she looks like she's really happy floating in space. And then all of a sudden he looks over and he sees those doors opening in the back and he kind of immediately realizes what's happening. I think he kind of goes into shock after that, but I do like Prax as a character so far. I think that's his nickname. That's what it is on IMDb. So that's what I'm going with. Correct me down below if I'm wrong, but I really do like him so far. He seems like a pretty good, like gray character. He seems to have like a lot of good sides to him. I think we're going to find out a lot more about him in the future. Maybe he ends up joining the Rosinante crew as a scientist, you know, cause I do kind of think they need someone like that. We have Naomi as the, you know, engineering scientist, but if we're going to understand the proto molecule more than we do already, I think we need someone more on the inside of that side of science, you know, biology, data informatics, that kind of thing. Whereas Naomi is much more of like, I can break into any system, I can do anything in IT, I can help fix the ship. I think this, I think Prax would be a great addition to the crew to add, you know, that another subset of information for them. And I, I really like his character so far. It depends on, you know, what happens in the future with his daughter and where they're going to Ganymede Station. But Anyways, I really like him as a character. I'm really curious to see how they kind of move him in through the story. It'll kind of depend on what happens to his daughter, though. Moving on from there, we get some really good things between Holden and Naomi this episode. I mean, there was a lot of give and take between them. Naomi is, like, mad at him for not telling her that he was going to go to Cortazar's room, and she's definitely questioning him. And we find out later in the episode that Holden was going there to kill him, which is, you know, what we kind of assumed as the viewer, but Naomi didn't know about it. And I really like the interaction for them in that scene where they're kind of making up a little bit. I, I know that Naomi is clearly hiding the stuff with the missile, which they do show earlier in the episode. And I obviously think that is going to come back to bite them in the ass as a couple, because the number one foundation for a relationship, as we all know, is trust. And that trust is going to be broken. Naomi did have a few moments where she could have said something about it, but Alex interrupted one of them. And anyways, I just obviously in the future, that's going to come up and it's going to create a rift between them. I am excited that tension is being built and I am really, really prepped for that. But 
I do like the fact that Naomi goes, that's not you. You know, he tries to bring up like, well, Miller killed Dresden and, you know, and you didn't say anything about that. But Naomi states to him that that's not you. That is not the Holden I know. That is not the Holden I love. And I really just, I love the way that he kind of answers back to her, like, please always bring me back. Like, that's why I need you. Please bring me back from that edge. And I think Holden kind of knows that that's like against his internal character. And I really do just love that whole scene where they're kind of sharing. I wish Naomi could have had a chance, but obviously, as I said, Alex interrupts them. And, you know, we don't get to find out if she's actually going to tell him about it. Maybe in the near term future, she might end up saying something, or maybe they actually have to go get it for some reason. But that's definitely going to be a ticking time bomb throughout this season. Next, let's just talk about Amos, because in this episode, I am feeling for this man, okay? Like, so far in this show, he is what you would consider, you know, the most closed-off character, at least in my opinion. I would say that he has probably revealed the least amount about himself. You know, Alex, I guess, could be up there. We end up learning that Alex has a family on Mars, and I don't know if that's been previously stated. It's late at night on a Sunday, so <laughs> forgive me. But we end up learning from Amos that, you know, he looks up Alex's family, and this obviously pisses off Alex because he had previously asked Amos, you know, he walks up behind him and you have Amos looking like really scruffy, like he's been out all night or doing debaucherous things. And uh, I don't know what that whole missing segment was, where he was during that whole time. But obviously, I think we'll maybe find out in the future. Or maybe we're just kind of supposed to assume that he was drunk or something like that, getting in a fight. But Alex is always trying to like kind of bring Amos, trying to challenge him a little bit. And in this episode, Amos kind of finally answers back at him and holding him over that ledge in the ship. And there's there's obviously something going on with Amos beyond what we see and he's a very complex character. Uh, you know, people are pretty easily, I think, sometimes kind of shove him off as like the brute strength of the crew. But I think there's a lot more there to him. And I think we learn about this in the episode when we see him searching for this girl named Lydia in Baltimore, right? So he knows someone from Earth. And it says unknown, I think, from where her location is. So I don't think they know exactly where she is at this point. But Obviously, in the future, I think she has to come into the story, right? Because Amos is having, it, he's having all of these internal feelings kind of conflicting within him. Uh, at times, he feels like he's dead inside, like when the little boy pushed, pushed him earlier in the episode, earlier in the season. And he talks to Cortazar, which I would not go to as a therapist. That's just me. But, uh, you know, there's obviously a lot of conflict within Amos as a character. And hopefully this Lydia character could end up hopefully solving that or maybe showing us why he's so conflicted or why he acts the way he does. But I really am interested now in his backstory because they present this other character as a mystery. And I just love the way that they set that up. The main action from this episode comes when the, what I'm going to consider the face tribal tattoo faction, basically the douchebag faction as I'm going to call them. And yeah, they did help us out earlier in the season when they had to storm that station, but I mean, you could kind of tell that they were not good guys. Uh, you know, they needed them for weapons and stuff like that. But in general, these guys do not seem like good guys at all. They walk in uh, they or they break in to pretty much they have someone on the inside. They break in, break into Fred Johnson and Drummer. And, you know, they try and hold that whole station hostage. And they're trying to use the nuclear missiles to send to Earth. And Fred Johnson in general in this episode, I feel like he's trying to appease like too many people. And I know that that's his job as the leader of a, you know, a pretty big station in the belt. But at the same time, I feel like Fred needs to kind of make a larger decision on what he wants to do. Because right now he, at least in my opinion, seems like he's in standby mode, right? And I know that Drummer supports him. And I know that a lot of people on Tycho support him. But clearly what he's doing isn't 100% right. Like she even states, she even states that, she, that he should take the call from Dawes, Anderson Dawes in the office. And pretty much he rejects that. He puts it up on the main screen with all the people in the room. And then of course the one guy is working with that faction. He helps them get in. They end up killing a bunch of people and they're trying to threaten Drummer and Fred Johnson. And once again, we learn from Fred. He's like, you can go ahead and kill me. I've been waiting to die for years. So I, he's pretty much a masochist at this point. Uh, he's waiting to die and they keep bringing that up. I don't know if that's su supposed to mean something else, but 
that drummer does bring that up when she's up in the lift with Naomi saying, you know, he was ready to die when uh, Anderson Dawes found him. And I, I really do want to find out like what Fred is actually thinking, like where he thinks he can go from here. If he's just going to use the nuclear weapons as a deterrent or, you know, I feel like he has a lot of conflicting emotions at this point. And I think this episode might have even pushed him even further than he wanted to go. So uh, yeah, I, that whole scene, though, where they break in and they shoot everyone. I mean, that that really took me by surprise. This episode kind of kicked it up a notch really quickly. Uh, I liked it, though. I really liked that whole scene where he's like threatening drummer and he ends up shooting her and kind of sticking his weapon in her wound. It, I hate that kind of stuff like on on screen because it makes me like squirm a bunch. But yeah, that that whole scene was done really well. And then I really love the way that Holden kind of counters this. And he's like, well, let's just, you know, get rid of all the oxygen in the room and then you can pretty much knock everyone out. And this is a pretty good strategy, like just in general in space, because air is so necessary and you can turn it on and off. It's a switch, you know, so uh, good, good job by holding on that part. He definitely took control in this situation. So they shut it off. They end up breaking in thanks to Amos, who once again, I was really scared he was going to die outside. They keep putting him in these action shots that make me so nervous, but hopefully he has a little bit of plot armor moving forward, but they end up getting in, they get back in, and then I have to hand out my badass award of the week drummer who you know has been shot she lost oxygen so Holden comes over gives her an oxygen mask and then Alex is helping her up and he's like come on we got to get you to med bay and then all of a sudden she just like pulls his gun out of his socket shoots shoots does not give a shit like pushes him off and then just walks off set like does not give a shit. This woman is a grade A badass. I absolutely love her character. I wish she would go with the Rosinante crew. I know that she's very loyal to Fred or at least gives that impression during this episode and maybe that is a false flag. So, you know, I'm definitely gonna have to watch her moving forward, but man, she does not even fucking hesitate to put two bullets out there. I mean, she she is a beast, okay? I would not mess with her in a million years. As always, let's just talk about the visuals really quick because I keep giving this show A pluses on all of the visuals. The CGI was once again clean. I like the way the Rosinante docks back then, that episode. The way that they show the refugee freighter and it's like flying at the screen. I thought that looked fantastic. The uh, lift that Naomi and Drummer are going up in to look at the antenna that Cortazar was using. And just in general, the visuals in this show have been perfect so far. I have really no complaints to put out there. I really loved, and I already mentioned this earlier, the Prax shot where he's in the beginning of the episode where he's looking at his daughter and then she kind of fades into black. I don't know if that's just a you know scene effect that they're using or perhaps maybe a little bit of foreshadowing of her falling into darkness. I am really curious as to where that goes. And then the audio for this episode was freaking killer. I swear, some of the tracks in this episode, I cannot wait to get my hands on this soundtrack. Like it is absolutely amazing. The scene where you have Prax throwing his daughter up on screen, you know, where like he swipes up from his from his handheld device up to the screen and the music is like slowly building for that. Absolutely amazing. The scene where Amos is outside and he's trying to break in, that the tension for that music is fantastic. And even just in general, I thought the sound effects for this episode were really good. Uh, I, I am really happy with this show on a visual and audio standpoint so far. Absolutely keep it up. You get an A+. Anyways, guys, I know this review was a little bit shorter than it normally is, but it's really late on Sunday night. I drove all day today. I'm extremely tired, so I just want to go to bed. Uh, I'll edit this for you and upload it tonight, but in general, let me know down in the comments below. What are your theories moving forward? Is the Naomi thing going to come back to bite her? Is it going to help us out later? Book readers, please do not spoil anything, okay? I will instantly block you for that. If you guys want to fill information with us, though, like that we didn't get in the TV show but is in the books and won't spoil anything moving forward, please do. Someone helped us out with the pill that they were taking last week. I don't think that'll spoil anything, but someone filled in that it was a focus pill. I really like that extra information, so please feel free to give me that. And I know I'm terrible at names, but feel free to keep correcting me anytime I mess up on them. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you absolutely hate me and you never want me to do a video again, even though I will. And subscribe to us here on YouTube. That helps us out a lot. All of these links are down in the video description. And until next time, guys, we'll see you soon.